Hello and welcome back and today we're going to do a very quick video about one of the many Synology beta applications that have been added to DSM 6.2.2. Now over the coming week or so we're going to be looking at all of them uh, that we've added recently. We're looking at today the migration assistant but in later videos we will of course be looking at that new and improved Synology drive and the client version 2.0 as well as team viewer but today we want to look at migration assistant. Now, it would be remiss of me not to highlight that if you already own a Synology NAS, do go into the Application Center and enable the option to look at beta packages. From here, you see lots of new apps that Synology are adding when they're bench testing a number of the new and exciting features they're going to add in newer versions of DSM. Now, Migration Assistant is kind of a, a built on existing logic, only more so. Until recently, uh, if you had an old Synology NAS that had hard drives and all of your data and stuff inside, as long as you were installing those drives in an equally supported newer Synology, in almost all instances, your RAID, your data, and all of the volumes and everything you've created would be carried over. Now, there were, of course, certain restrictions, such as if you were using a traditional RAID and moving over into an SHR-based RAID environment and vice versa. Likewise, a number of the applications and tasks uh, that are supported on one more powerful NAS aren't supported on others, and this can always cause problems. So, in an effort to make things a great deal easier, Synology have now released Migration Assistant, once again in beta. And this is the ability to have two NASs on your network environment and make it painfully easy to synchronize an older NAS that you're using at the time, filled with all your data, your volumes, and your layout, and the way you've set things up on your NAS over the years, and carry it over to another NAS. Now, this doesn't just have to be from old to new, it can work from new to old. And today, what we're going to utilize is two NASs in my network environment that, although are similar, are by no means the same NAS. We're using an old DS3612XS, and a DS2419 Plus. Now it's worth mentioning straight away, uh, as all the guides tell you, is one, to make sure that Migration Assistant is installed on both of the NASes. So you will need to make sure you're using a NAS that supports Migration Assistant. Pretty much all of them are covered, but I'm not sure if some of the lower tiered J series models have got it. Next, you have to make sure you've got the same version of DSM installed. So more than likely you will need DSM 6.2.2. But after that, it's actually relatively straightforward. For those that have been following the channel for a while, you'll know that the DS2419 Plus I'm using for this video has had loads of data on it that I've been using for transcoding experiments, backup, and more. So what we want to do in the case of this video is we're going to carry all of the data and all the storage and volumes and all that stuff that I've created over from the DS2419 Plus onto this DS321XS. I've set it up for the first time. I've not done anything really in terms of data. I've not installed anything. I've created a storage area during the initial setup, but that's about it. I've not done run much. I haven't even created a shared folder. This DS3612XS is like I've just set it up for the first time. So in order to conduct migrations assistance uh, setup, what you need to do is log into the NAS that you want to receive the data. So I want to receive data onto this one. This is the NAS, the 3612, that I want the data to uh, be copied to. Now, once you've got into it, go into the beta packages and install Migration Assistant. It will now appear along with all your other applications here, and you just need to click on it. Now, once again, do make sure that Migration Assistant is installed on the NAS that you want to copy the data from. Once you open the Migration Assistant tool on the NAS that you want to receive the data on, it will come up with this on screen. Just letting you know that the data, the packages, the configuration, all of that will be copied over. But stuff like licenses for surveillance station, virtualization, uh, the virtuali uh, virtualization tool, virtual machine manager, none of that will be copied over because these are locked to your system. And if you do have a license locked to a system, there are ways in which you can transfer it over, but that's for another video, we'll leave that to another time. So we click next, and then it asks you to double check that what uh, the devices you've got are set up in the way you've described. Also, things like high availability between two NASs, SSD caching with SSDs installed in additional bays, and time machine backups that are account linked 
will not be copied over so you have to bear that in mind equally there is a link there that I just noticed that lets you know which devices support this brand new tool and it's worth highlighting that even a casual glance at this shows that all of these devices are x86 64-bit CPUs almost all Intel related with a couple of exceptions down here where for those Annapurna chips uh, Annapurna chips that are 10 GBE related so now we can click next and now it will ask us to find the source server now there is a drop down here that will search your local area network but what I would argue is my network is fantastically busy at the moment so I would recommend making your way directly into the NAS in question and directly copying it into this window from there make sure you add your login credentials and then click next and let the NAS find the other NAS on the network now on this DS2419 plus I've got quite a sizable amount of data I think I've got a few hundred gigabytes that we used in our 1 GBE versus 10 GBE testing um, so once that's loaded up there, you'll see that there's a big old pile of data in the file station manager. And again, my network is rather busy at the moment. So don't blame slight delays there on the system. As you can see, when it loads up this, there's loads of files here. Now, if we make our way back to the DS3617XS12XS, uh, it's just now finding the source folder. And once they're synchronized, we'll be able to see the folders on the other device. Here they are. On screen, it's letting us know that there's a total capacity of 12.73 terabytes due to the 12 TB drive inside that device. And this device here, if we go into the storage manager and make our way in, we should see that there's a 12 TB drive installed inside this device. Oh, I digress. It's got a 4 TB WD red, my mistake. But nevertheless, there is 4 TB of data inside here going into this 12 TB NAS. So we have loads and loads of space available to us. From here, we click apply, and it's letting us know that it's going to take 10 hours, 25 minutes. So don't worry, this isn't going to be a 10 hours long video. But we click apply, and it's letting us just confirm that the following is going to take place. That the, both of these NASs are now going to cease in their own respective ways. The 2419 Plus is going to be temporarily ceased while that data is carried over. So any applications or stuff that's running on the primary or on that original NAS are going to be stopped. Likewise, on the target NAS, the 3612, what's going to happen is that anything related to storage is now going to be overwritten with this new configuration. So without further ado, let's start the transfer. We have to enter our password because it needs to double check that we're totally cool with this thing that we're doing. We click submit and off we go. The migration assistant is now going to have detailed instructions on screen during the transfer time detailing what exactly is going on. And if there are any errors, they will be presented here. But what I'm going to do now is fast forward this video around 10 hours, 25 minutes from now. Let's go. So we're back here on the desktop of our DS3612XS. Uh, the migration assistant has completed its job and we're ready to do the restart. I won't lie, it took quite a while. It took uh, well overnight. I've come back to this after doing some other projects, but it did take at least 10 to 12 hours at the very, very least. So that estimate they gave was pretty accurate, of course. If you directly connect the devices or utilize things like 10 GPE, I'm sure this could be sped up. But for now, we're just going to be running this test on network services. So at the end of the transfer, it's given me a notification here to know that it's um, going to check the consistency of the data between these two devices. And it's going to slowly cease all operations on the 2419 plus. Then the device is going to restart. So I understand what's going to happen and the further modification to the server will not be transferred over. So let's get started with the next stage. As we can see, it's been running for five days according to the migration assistant, but it did not take five days to do that transfer. I've had to come back to these NASs on the back of other projects. If I had to be generous 
Um, I would say over the top it took mm, 15 hours there or thereabouts, but of course this wasn't a fully populated device in terms of capacity, so that might make a big difference to you with your transfers. But what I'm going to do now is let the restart take place, and in theory, all of this data will be migrated over to the other NAS according to the Migration Assistant tool. So let's fast forward to the restarting of these NAS. Right, so our DS3612XS has now rebooted. I've also added uh, a tab up here at the top to the DS2419 Plus, but let's make our way into this NAS. Uh, we're just going to skip the usual steps there about analytics and privacy and stuff like that and this will open the device at the top we can already see an icon already in place at the top and if we go into the 241 uh, 2419 we don't have anything there activating and the cpu and memory utilization is very low now the migration assistant here is now detailing us on the 3612 xs that it has been a success goodbye windows how annoying are you um we can see lots of information about what's been transferred over and we'll go into the file manager in a second but let's look at a summary of what it's saying here it's transferred this data over and it has been a full carry over here it was the full drive that was the total capacity of the volume so it has been a block by block transfer there it's not just been the data that i had on one nas because i don't think i had more than a few hundred gigabytes at most on that 2419 plus uh, but the migration time there, it's saying five days, but once again, that's only because I didn't come back to the NAS sooner because of other projects. It really took about a day and a bit, so you can ignore that for now. We close that. We can run a new task if we want, but we're not going to be doing that, but we'll leave that on screen and we'll make our way into this system and see what's happened. So if we look there, we can look first at the applications and we can see that the applications themselves are transferred over pretty well, but again, None of that, a lot of those apps were already there, so where the data is transferred over is going to be what's really, really important. And if we go to the file manager, we can take a look inside and see the structure of the data inside this NAS. So we already looked at some of that space beforehand. Let's see how it's transferred over between these two NASs. Um, we've got there, we've got that active backup for business Z, uh, Z file from a previous video, and What's particularly interesting is you can see that even that shared folder we created before on the 2419 in a previous video is now available on this 3612XS. The data has been migrated over successfully and we've still got the old NAS as well. Now maybe we would want to use this as a network backup, maybe. There's lots of other things that we want to do with having two NASs, but this has been how easy it is to use Migration Assistant, the new beta from Synology, and once again, I do recommend you head on over and look at all the other applications that are now available in the beta section of your Synology NAS. I'm covering them all in these videos. Let's have a quick look. Lots of TNC there that we probably should have read. And if we look at the beta packages, we can see if there's anything new that has been added. So far, we have covered TeamViewer, Synology Drive, Synology Chat, Synology Office, uh, and we're going to be doing a whole feature section on Active Backup very, very soon. But otherwise, I'm going to wrap things up here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and learn more about Solology NAS and indeed the world of NAS in general. Cheerio.